because our God is alive. You believe that? Let's see. There is beyond the Asia blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. Thus our God created man, he is a God. The great I am. There was a long, long time ago a God whose voice the prophets heard. He is a God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired. Yes, his inspired word. There is a there is a God, he is alive, in him we live, and we survive. Does our God created man, he is our God, the great I am. Seek your life from mortal mind God holds a germ within his hand though men may search they cannot find for God alone does un yes God does understand there is a God he is alive and him we live and we survive from the star God created man, he is our God, the great I am. Thank you, brother. Number four, our God who sun upon a tree, a life was willing there to give. That he might, might set man free and evermore with him. Yes, evermore could live. There is a God. He is a he is alive in him. We in him we live and we survive from the star God created man. He is a God. Our God, 
the great I, the great I am. All right, all right. Good morning, Midtown. Um, at this time, we'd like to acknowledge any of our first time visitors. Uh, if you're visiting with us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. We ask that you look in the seat back in front of you and there should be a visitor information card. If you complete that, uh, fill out that visitor information card, you can drop in our collection plate here or you can deposit it in the suggestion box in the foyer. Um, if you are visiting or streaming with us for the first time, we'd like to welcome you also. Um, we know that you have many choices and we appreciate you stopping by and worshiping with us today. Um, we we'll also ask you to drop us a line. Um, if you go to our website, which is clcomidtown.com, uh, under the uh, contacts, you click on contacts and you put in visitor, and then you'll be able to, um, in the suggestion box, tell us how you enjoy the service. All right? Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Amen. That was supposed to warm you up. Remember, all of those scriptures that the preacher gives us from the Psalms tell us that we need to praise. Amen. Now, I may be saying this in a way that is a little funny, but we need to take this stuff serious, church. Everybody look like they ate this morning. Everybody look like they got a bath. Hymn number 59 in our purple books. Holy, holy, holy. Let's give God his due. I wouldn't trade him for nothing. No, no, no. I've had my share of the world and don't want any more. 59, holy, holy, holy. And this will get us prepared for prayer. 59. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. rise to thee holy 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons bless Trinity, holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the Glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who was and are and shall be holy 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 though the darkness hide thee though the eyes of sinful men thy glory may only thou art holy there is none beside thee perfect in power in 
Jesus. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to come here and gather in your name. We ask you to just watch over and bless us and keep us here. Yes. Then we may worship here in spirit and in truth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joshua. Here, number 301. He loves me so. Number 301. This will be the song before the Lord's Supper, or in preparation of the Lord's Supper. Why did my Savior come to earth? And to the humble go, why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. Just like for me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. He loved, he loved me so. Me he so. He loved, he loved me so. Me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing praise, and then to glory go. church. Uh, we will now have a communion. Uh, 
in accordance to the scriptures in Acts 27, we are to partake in the communion on the first day of the week. And it reads, now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his speech until midnight. Paul, writing to the church of Corinth, uh, wrote the following, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took, took bread. And when, it, and when he had given thanks, he broke and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread that represents your son's broken body. We thank you for the opportunity for taking this bread, Father God, and we ask that you that we take it in clean hands, with clean hands and pure heart. All these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's access the bread. Let us eat. In the same manner, <clears throat> in the same manner also, uh, took the cup after supper, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the cup. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup that represents your son's blood that was shed on the cruel cross of Calvary. We, we thank you for the opportunity to partake in this cup, Father God, and I ask and pray that we do with clean hands and pure heart. All these things are asking your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us access the cup. Let us drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This concludes the Lord's Supper. We now have collection. <clears throat> Separate and apart from the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week, we are also to take up a, collect, a collection. According to uh, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, it reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have, all, as, as I have given orders uh, to the church of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each of you lay, aside, lay something aside, Storing up as he as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Let us pray for the, for the giving. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to give back a portion to you which you have blessed us with, Father God. We thank you for taking care of us, Father God. We thank you for all the many blessings. We thank you for the shelter that you have provided, the food that you allowed us to have on our table, Father God, the, the clothes that you allowed us to have on our backs, Father yes. God. We ask and pray that the, that the collections here go to the upkeep um, and the betterment of your kingdom. All these things we ask and pray in your son in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, those present here, please feel free to place your offering in place on the table. Like those who are at home, you may also give uh, through the church app on Midtown COC website or by mail. And using the church apps or website, simply follow the step-by-step -step direction after clicking on the button to give. If you choose to mail your donations, uh, in the mailing, uh, the, the mailing address is Midtown COC, P.O. Box number 585572, Orlando, Florida, 32858. Thank you. The song for invitation, would you please mark number 111, Yield Not to Temptation, in your purple songbook. 111, Yield Not to Temptation. And at this time, song before the word will be hymn number 173. Because he is our king. Amen. All day long of Jesus I am singing. He's my, 
of joy will ever come on church all the while he keeps my heart bells ringing for his love is everything to me he's my king and oh i dearly love him he's my king no other is above him all day long of raptured praise i i sing he's my blessed savior he's my my blessed king streams of love around my soul are flowing from his heart love's everlasting spring that is why my faith in him i'm showing that is why an endless song i sing he's my king and oh i dearly i love him he's my king no other is above him all day long in raptured praise i i sing he's my blessed savior he's my my blessed king in his light, I'm going home to glory with a soul who trusts in saving grace. Going home to sin and tell the story. Then the blessed sunshine of his faith, the healing king, and who I dearly love him. He's my blessing, my King, no other is above him. All day long, in rapture praise I, I sing now. He's my blessed Savior, he's my King, my blessed King. Amen and amen. You may take your seat at this time. The psalmist writes, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which comes my help. Amen. The psalmist hurries and says, my help comes from the Lord. Thank you, uh, this is the same Lord who made both heaven and earth. Amen. This same Lord, the psalmist writes, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He says, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. That's right, amen. The psalmist says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Amen. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Now in the very next verse of the very next song, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house yes. of the Lord. Amen. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Perhaps you didn't hear me. He said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Perhaps some of us uh, are having a little issues with the audio uh, this evening or this morning. He said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The psalmist's confession uh, was that he was glad. The psalmist's confession was that he was in a good mood. The psalmist's confession was that he greeted it with joy. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Some of us, when it's time to go to church, we are everything but glad. We are sad. We are mad. We feel like uh, uh, somebody is bothering on us when they say, uh, uh, can you wake up and go to church with me uh, on Sunday morning? Can you go with me to sing Zion songs? Can you go with me to offer a prayer uh, to my God who saved me from myself. The psalmist said, I was glad 
When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Coming up in the church, I was taught as a young boy, be careful of friends that go everywhere with you, but go to church. Somebody say amen when you can. They'll go with you uh, uh, to the club. They'll go with you uh, 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 to the corner store. They'll go, go with you and hang out on the block. They'll go with you to the mall and spend all your money and theirs. They'll go with you everywhere. They'll go out to eat uh, uh, with Collectively, we come together as a church. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you know whose house it is, you'd be excited this morning. If you knew whose house it was, you perhaps would be uh, a little bit moved. That psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of of the Lord evidently being in the house of God made him feel good yes, about himself. I don't know about you, but uh, Sunday morning allows me to reset my, my yes, week. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I sometimes I end on a bad note. Uh, but when I get up Sunday morning, no matter where I'm at, I'm on a good note. Uh, because it's the first day of the week and we're called to praise him. I get a new start. And indeed, each and every morning I get a new start. But it's something, as a song they say, there's something about Sunday morning. And I'm thankful to be here and I'm thankful for all of you who are here with us on this morning. And seeing several faces who haven't been with us here presently in a while. It's good to see uh, each and every one of you here uh, uh, with us as well. It is a privilege as well as an honor for you to worship with us on this morning. We know and understand that there are many other places you could worship, many other houses to worship even on this street, but you found it not rather in your heart to worship with us, the saints of Midtown. We are immeasurably grateful uh, for your presence. We're thankful to God. We're thankful for this day. We do, we'll have a brief or uh, slight change in the program on this afternoon. Uh, right before we have our closing prayer, we'll have a small uh, uh, presentation for one of our uh, students, uh, one of our young people, so they ask that you don't rush out when the message is over. Just stay around just for a second. We'll be a little bit longer, better, about five minutes longer uh, than usual. And while we're saying it, thank you so much. Uh, Rich, Rich says, turn the mic on. Any little bit nappy? Okay. Maybe that's why y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Turn the mic on. We need to get a scanner. TJ, why are you telling the mic one now, man? Look for TJ to help a brother like that. Mm -hmm. Nikki, help him, man. Help him. No, let us be standing. Uh, let us be standing. If you don't mind, let us be standing. Want to thank, want to thank all the brothers who participated uh, in our worship service this morning, particularly Brother Melvin, who uh, leaned in um, at the last minute. We're so thankful for him uh, for being always ready and always willing. Uh, to serve on the Lord. While you're standing, take your Bible, hold it up in the air, hold it up in the air, and repeat after me. When I'm in worship, I read my Bible. Because I don't want no preacher lying to me. I haven't heard somebody say, emphasize, I don't want no preacher. Hey, Amen. I don't want nobody lying to me. Matter of fact, certainly not the preacher. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Turn your Bible. Turn your Bible over to. Uh, where are we preaching from today? Hold on. Oh, yeah, Acts. <laughs> Turn your Bible over to the book of Acts. Pixis Apostolon is his name in the Greek. The chapter is uh, number 19. We'll begin reading uh, at verse number 1 and conclude our reading at verse. Number five, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, uh, begin at verse number one. I'll be reading for the new uh, King James Version. If you have a reliable translation, it should not differ significantly. Acts 
19, verse number 1. I'll let have it, confirm it by saying amen. amen. The Bible says, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to him, into what men were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John, you baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I read for you the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 through 5. Let all those who agree and believe that the Bible is the word of God say amen. amen. You may have your seats at this time. When I first went off to uh, college, Grace, I, I wasn't good off as you. I didn't have a bank account. Sure, I knew what a bank was, but just barely. Uh, growing up, we didn't have much money, Brother Burgess, so having a bank account didn't make much sense. Why well, put the money in there today? just to get it out tomorrow. The only financial transactions I was thoroughly acquainted with was the deposits and withdrawals made at the Bank of the Bosom and uh, the Coffee Can Credit Union. In like fashion, as a college freshman, I utilized ceiling postopedic savings and loan. Yes, the bulk of my net worth was tucked away underneath a Dorm room matches. It was, it seems really uh, so archaic when you think about it, but back then it was all that I knew. I remember one day hanging out playing Mortal Kombat with uh, BJ and Haskell in their room. Uh, young folks, you know how you've been battling on the video games for a while. It was an intense round of games. And Unfortunately for me, BJ was on the road. The only one that had beaten him all day was me, and that had been a long time ago. Uh, so then during that last match, I had him, t I had him uh, t on the ropes. I had him till his power was at the warning signals. And, and just when I thought the victory was mine, just when I had risen up against Pharaoh, he executed a four-punch combo. It drained the rest of my life for us, Joshua. He pulled a victory from where the sun don't shine. And on top of that, he proceeded to finish me with a fatality. And before I could hit play again, he dropped the sticks. I was anxious for a rematch, but he claimed he had to go to work. I can only hope to vindicate myself on another day. At that time, BJ had a job at First Union. And so for some reason, I asked him about his job on that day. He told me about what he did and shared with me some of the benefits of First Union. The First Union, according to him, was the best bank. I, I should open an account with him there. He had it been someone else, I might have been ashamed. Uh, had it been someone else uh, who I didn't know so well, uh, I might not have told him all my business. But BJ and I were best friends at that time. We, we shared everything. We shared watches in middle school. We shared liquor in high school and girlfriends, I mean girls' phone numbers uh, in college. And, and because I trusted him, I told him that I didn't have an account anywhere. I told him I didn't know where to begin. We never had money. I had only been in the bank one time. I was willing 
even excited, but nervous, because I didn't know what to do. On top of that, they had what's called a minimum deposit. Uh, and that minimum deposit requirement, Sister Sally, exceeded my current revenue projections. So BJ said, when I get my net check, you know, the refund after they pay off all the fees, when I get my net check, that I should come see him at the bank, and he'll show me exactly what I need to do. A couple of weeks later, I got my check. And I promptly went to see BJ on the job. I made my first deposit with First Union in the fall of 1993. They were bought by the Cobia and by Wells Fargo, and despite predatory loan practices, I stayed with him ever since. It's almost impossible to live well in America without a solid banking relationship. But early in life, I just didn't know any better. My Angelou TJ said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. You see, in life, we have to stop living in the past. In life, we have to stop basing our tomorrow solely upon yesteryear. We must learn to be perpetual learners. Beyond that, we have to forgive ourselves for not knowing what we didn't know before we learned it. You and I are human. We don't get everything right uh, from the start. Somebody say amen, but the plan of God for our lives is not to end up where we started. We must grow. We have to mature. We must open up our minds to God and to the natural world. We can't stay in the place that we've always been. We have to learn, Reginald. We must grow. We have to evolve. Our quest is to do the best it can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. Life is a constant evolution. The more I learn, the less I figure out that I know. Many things that seemed wise so long ago, right and proper, no longer made good sense. When I was a child, they told us that you need to eat balanced meals containing each of the four food groups. Now they say there are five food groups plus essential oils. Did I eat wrong as a child? Maybe, maybe not. But now that I know better, I ought to do better. They used to tell us that red meat was good for you. They eat it often, but now that I know better, I ought to be doing better. When I was coming up, there was no such thing as trans fat. People didn't worry about their cholesterol. But now that I know better, I ought to be doing better. When I came up, we used to put meat in our vegetables. Somebody say amen to neck bones and collard greens. But now that I know better, I ought to do better. We used to, uh, in my youth, you weren't allowed to be allergic to anything. You weren't going to throw it up. You were going to clear out your plate. Otherwise, what you would get, get and then be worse than what you had. Uh, uh, but now that I'm older and I know better, I ought to do better. We used to drink water out of hot water hoses. Now they say that causes cancer, but now that I'm older and because I know better, I ought to do better. It was a time that we were, we didn't buy bicycles with helmets. Crystal oil was a wholesome choice for your family. Whole milk used to be good for you. Father John, which is sweetened by liver oil, was one of the best cough, cough medicine. We used to give people turpentine and sugar for pinworms. We used to rub butter. On the rooms. Uh, that's called deep fried dizzy. <laughs> it was not good, uh, but it's okay. I was a child back then. Paul said when he was a child, he speak as a child. He understood as a child, but when he became a man, he put away the childish things. In other words, when he learned better, he did better. Not modifying our habits based on new information is harmful, even sorrowful and sinful. James writes, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does it not to him, it is sin. I came by the church house to tell us that when we know better, we ought to do better. So many times uh, in our life we get caught up 
on yesteryear, so many times in our life, Reginald, we get caught up on the way things used to be, and we get stuck, as we say, on stupid. We get stuck in the usual and old patterns that we used to have, but I want you to know, church, as a people of God, that when we learn better, we ought to do better. Our lives ought to be a constant evolution. Somebody uh, back in the hood, uh, when I come through every now and then, they say, DZ, I don't know about you. You've changed. And I say, yes, I have. You're you're right about it. But they say you changed as if that was an insult. They say you changed to say I did something wrong. But I came by the church house to tell you that if in 30 years I'm the same person who I was, in 30 years I'm still doing the same old thing, in 30 years if I ought to move off that block, then it's shame on me. Because now that I'm older, now that I've learned, and I've, since I learned better, I ought to do better. See, church, this message is for all of us in all ways of our life. I told the church that in one of these days, y'all going to believe me, God is not just the author of spiritual life. God is the author of all life. Well, works are uh, in God. Works in your life. Works in your family, works uh, uh, on the job, works on the school. And one thing that God wants us to do is to grow and evolve in him and in our individual pursuits. Church, when we know better, we ought to do better. Right, I, I, first of all, this is a spiritual message. Uh, this is about us improving ourselves in our walk with God. There's some things that we did wrong in the past. There's some things we didn't understand, understand in the past. There are some ways we used to be in the past. But since we know better, since we've learned better, since we've got new information, we ought to do better. Uh, that's the primary focus of the message. But all of God's messages is for the totality of our lives. When it comes to our person, our spirit, our emotions, when we learn better, do better. See, some of us are still holding on to the past. Uh, uh, sister, uh, uh, Tony, it, it, we, we're holding on to the time that we did wrong. And we didn't understand. Uh, 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 but we can't hold ourselves to, to information uh, uh, that we didn't have. It's kind of like nowadays that you see, and I, and I don't want to get political, I don't want to get off too much on the message. Uh, sometimes in, in our lives we see folks uh, that brought up on trial uh, uh, for stuff that happened 50, 60 years ago. Uh, and they ain't even old enough to commit that. And they too old to commit them same old crimes. Uh, but because society has changed, the perception and the view of those events have changed. And what I want you to know is that times change and people get better and people grow. And so when we know better, we ought to do better. But what we do in society is have people stuck. What we do in society and to ourselves is we stick ourselves the way we, uh, we, we convict ourselves on the old things rather than living in the new things as a parent. As a parent, we make mistakes. Me and my say, as a parent, sometimes we make mistakes. And it was one or two times, me and my, I believe you might have worked down for something, and you shouldn't have, maybe. Maybe, man. And, and, and what you cannot do, me and my, is say, oh, I made a mistake, therefore I ain't, oh, I'm sorry. You can't live in that. You know, when I was a kid, it wasn't nothing to have to buy an iron once a month. But what are we talking about? We, we, Sometimes we had to buy our iron uh, once a month. You know why we had to buy our iron, Brother Bridges? Because mom would cut the cord off of them. And, and they would exercise. Come on now. Come on now. Y okay, okay. y'all look at me like, uh, like y'all are like, what is your brother talking about roots or something? Now, you listen to me. There was, a, there was a thing used to be called a whipping. It, it, it's kind of like a spanking, but much worse. Uh, it's when you apply the Board of Education to the suit of knowledge. And the design is to evoke change in your behavior. Uh, uh, there was whoopings, and some of the whoopings we got was child abuse. Oh, come on, man. somebody say amen. Uh, I was abused as a child. <laughs> you got hit with the nearest thing sometimes. Until we cut the extension cord, they're mad at you because you made a mess up the iron. 
She cut the cord, I'm spending the afternoon fixing it back together. We make mistakes as people. Your commitment, what God holds you to, Reggie, is how did you know better? Do better. We gotta let ourselves be free to live. Tell you this some stuff I did to you when you were little. I did it for you good. And it turned out pretty good. So that Christian, here with his son every week, bring a nephew with him. I had him just like he had his nephew. But not everything I did. Not to sit here cry. Or now that I know better, I can do better. Yeah, I would put put the thing back on the screen. I, I had that up there for a second. Go ahead, put it back on the screen. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all thought I was gonna run past them because this thing we really uh, uh uh most of us in here need learn about this right here. Y'all, y'all see what's on the screen? Let's see. Let's see if y'all recognize it. Let's, let's do a vision check. Can y'all can y'all see the screen from here? All right, all right. On the left right here, what you guys know what that is? That's macaroni and cheese, huh? And you see that over on the on the on the, the y'all see? Do y'all see that? I can't. No, on the on the left. No, no. You see in the cheese in the macaroni and cheese? You see the brown area? Uh, you know what that is? That's that's when the cheese is cause it's cuddled up together and they got burnt on the top. That, that that's good. Uh uh. And then over here, over here to the top, y'all y'all know what that is? They're collard greens. But if you look right under the W and under the B, you know better. You see some meat in there, ain't there? Well, yeah, and, and after you ate it, uh, if you looked at the pot liquor, you would see all residue, amen? Because you put pork, hormones, chitlins, chitlins, in your vegetables. Then in the bottom, behind X, y'all y'all, know what that is, this yellow? Yeah. That's cornbread. Specifically, that's Jiffy. Uh huh? Uh huh? If it is at my house, it's Jiffy with, with some extra stuff in it. Amen. And last, and certainly not least, the coup de gras. What is the fourth thing on the video, TJ? Can you see it? Fried chicken. Now he says fried chicken. Now, 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 it's crispy too, man. It ain't undercooked either. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got dog meat, man. You know, I know we eat the white meat now, but the dog meat is juicy. Oh, and if I could show you what's outside the frame right here, there'd probably be some hot sauce or Tabasco sauce. And with all this oil, some of us still add salt and pepper. We already got meat in the meal. It's meat in the grease. But we got the fried chicken anyway. So we got fried chicken fat, boiled pig fat. And then we got cow fat coming in the form of cheese. And if it's real good, it's government cheese. We added butter in the cornbread. This is a heart attack to go. This is high blood pressure on steroids. But when we came up, that was called good eating. But when you know better, Oh, y'all ain't say amen. Amen. This don't look good. You ain't knowing if this don't look good to you. But I can't eat this every day. It ain't even good once a week, be honest with you. This is holiday eating. But for some of us, it's two, three times a week. How do I know that? That one of the fastest growing restaurant types is soul food restaurants. Amen. They're popping up everywhere on the way to work. One well, of the best restaurants you can get so far is at the gas station down the street. Yeah. 
We call it the king of soul food. Don't cry himself. They should be selling liquor to her at the bag. It's so popular that folks eat from there every day. Well, somebody said, brother, that's better than McDonald's and Wendy's. Wind, wind yeah, maybe. <laughs> Cancer on one side, heart attack, stroke on the other side. I mean, pick your poison. <laughs> what am I trying to drive home? Because we know better. And if we just get that right when it comes to God, and we get that right when it comes to our lives, the business of lives, and if we can get that right when it comes to our health, we'll be better off. We'll be a more holistic people. Church, when you know better, do better. Acts 19. Acts 19. Uh, the Acts, the uh, second book written by Luke. Praxis Apostle lines, the Acts of the Apostle, but if you follow the book specifically, it's really interesting in two guys. Uh, first, Peter, and then the actions of Paul. Peter and Paul were the cornerstones uh, uh, of this new movement uh, uh, that we call uh, the Way. Uh, Acts 19 gets us uh, oriented with the church that Paul helped define, Ephesus. You know, uh, the church at Ephesus was founded uh, in the midst of trouble. Uh, so don't get along when the churches have trouble. Uh, you're going to have some trouble sometimes. Uh, we as a family of God, we're going to have some trouble. We as families in general are going to have some trouble. If life ain't bringing you any trouble, that's probably because you ain't doing much in life. Uh, uh, when, you go through, when you're going through some things, it's because you're going through, Amen. And when you try to change and you try to be better, there are contrary winds and contrary forces against you. And so the church uh, at Ephesus was founded in some trouble. Uh, uh, Paul had uh, cast a demon out of a young girl, and, and people there were using that woman uh, uh, for money. And, and when their means of having money uh, had run out, then they had a problem with Paul. And so they ran Paul uh, out of town. And so Paul, though, was successful in setting up the church. And he sent uh, Timothy uh, over to the church to help uh, guard and shepherd and lead that church. And so in Acts uh, uh, 19, we see Paul circling back uh, that way just to see how uh, this church ha had been. Acts chapter 19. Let's get the next verse from me, uh, Richard. My, my slide's not working. All right, Acts, Acts 19. It says, And it happened while the palace was at Corinth. That Paul, having passed through that reason, I told you he had went away and he was circling back, came to Ephesus. And the Bible says he found some disciples. Now, when you see the word uh, disciples there, uh, the word there in Greek and is certain disciples, some disciples. And you lose, uses that term to loosely talk about Christians, the people who were following the way, people who were doing what God would have them to do. Paul said he, uh, 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 or the Bible says, Luke says, he says, I passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and he found some disciples. If you look at the preceding verses and the following verses, uh, the disciples, that term is used about 20 times in the book of Acts, and it exclusively refers to folks of the Christian group. Why is this important? This is not about being general believers, about people. These are people who are trying to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He said to them, and I don't know why he said to them, but evidently something happened in their lives. Evidently he saw something. Perhaps he didn't see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, or perhaps even he was talking to them about their religious uh, experience. He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? The, the Holy Spirit uh, was something that you got when you came to faith. Uh, let me say that again. The Holy Spirit was something you got when you came to faith. And, and Christians, we need to stop being afraid of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 says, tells us that when baptized, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is not something you catch. It's something that's given to you. And so when people talk about they catch the Holy Ghost, uh, Brother Ray, that ain't even the Bible. Uh, and, only, and if anything, God is a God of order. God uh, is not a God of confusion. And so if you see somebody foaming and backflipping and laying on and causing confusion, that ought to let you know that ain't from God. He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit 
We agree. You ask him a specific question. Uh, he didn't accuse him of nothing. He asked him a question. Uh, when you talk to somebody ready about God, don't, don't, don't get up in their face until you know what's going on. Amen? Amen. Ask them some questions. We so many times we want to run up on somebody. We, we so many times we want to talk to people, uh, particularly in the church of Christ, we want to jump around. Oh, you ain't got this right. You, got, you don't know what people got. Amen. Talk to them first. He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Uh, did you get the gift? When you believe. And they said to him, we have not even heard as to whether there is a Holy Spirit. He said, uh, we haven't even heard about the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can't get what we ain't heard of. Uh, 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 how can we know about something? We've never even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And so because they hadn't heard uh, whether there is a Holy Spirit, Paul surmised that there was a problem. Uh, y'all, y'all got time for this? He said there was a problem. How do I know that? He said, then in verse number three, he said to them, into what then were you baptized? Uh, notice the text. He didn't say uh, by what, for what. He says, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. Uh, Brother Washington, you guys in the Church of Christ, you, uh, you use baptism. Uh, Richard, go ahead. Just, we got real run with it. Uh, uh, it says, uh, 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 baptism. You guys in the Church of Christ, you're always emphasizing baptism. Baptism. Well, why got to be baptized? Uh, baptism is essential. Uh, and why is it essential? We believe it's the thing that gets you saved. It's the thing that adds you to the church. It's the thing that Christians do. There is no, there is no entering uh, uh, Jesus Christ outside of baptism. Somebody uh, uh, preaches that you hear people teach that it's an outward showing of inward grace. Uh, but ain't no Bible in that. They say you receive God by prayer. Uh, uh, the sinner's prayer. Y'all heard that before. Uh, uh, take God in your heart. And everybody got a different verse. The problem with those things is that they're not found in your Bible. Amen. Why is that a problem, Brother Watson? If they're not found in my Bible, that means somebody made them up. And if somebody made it up, the question then becomes is how accurate or valid is that for me today? But beyond all that, notice what this verse says. Notice what this verse says. Uh, and if y'all need other scriptures for what I just said, I'll give it to you. But I don't want us to leave from this verse because this verse alludes to something or points to something that even us as Christians, I don't care. I don't think we quite understand. He says, into what then were you baptized? He said, baptism is a transmission. He says, into what were you baptized? Not what type. He says, into what? They said, into John's baptism. John, uh, Jesus' first cousin, the full one of Christ, or a full one of Christ, his design and his call was to make way for Jesus, uh, to proclaim and make his path straight, uh, is what the prophecy said. He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ, and he was baptizing folks. As a matter of fact, there were some of his disciples saying uh, uh, to John, y'all remember, uh, in the book, he, in the book of Matthew, he said to John, he says, this guy Jesus over here is baptizing more people than you. And that's why John told him, he says, I must decrease and he must increase. And so these folks, they said, uh, we were baptized into John's baptism. John is a forerunner of Jesus Christ. John told the church or told the Jews that we must repent. We got to get ourselves right with God. He told them something that they needed to do based on their lives then. That's what John, so they were baptized into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed, or of the truth, John baptized with the baptism of what? John baptized with the baptism of repentance. John's baptism was about you changing your mind about where you were. 
Huh? He says, saying to the people that it should believe on him who should come after him. John did these things that day uh, because he was the forerunner of Jesus. Y'all get what I'm saying? He came before Jesus. You couldn't be baptized in the Jews before Jesus got here and got on the scene, amen? Don't make sense. You can't be baptized in something you don't know or you ain't heard about it. And so before, and he told them, y'all need to get yourself right, get your hearts right with God. And they followed him. They repented. They changed their heart. And they were baptized. He said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who will come after him. That is, on who? Christ Jesus. They should believe on Christ Jesus. Notice the text says, on Christ Jesus. That means the fundamental of your faith is based on who Jesus is. On oh, Christ the solid rock I sin. Uh, they're talking about what's your foundation of the belief, because we can believe a lot of things. But if the foundation ain't right, the whole building will be wrong. He says that is on Christ Jesus. Then when they heard what? They were wait a minute, they were already baptized. They were baptized already. Paul didn't invalidate what they had already believed. But now they got new information. You can't be taught wrong and baptized right. If you need further, go back to verse number one and talk about a guy named Apollos. Just in chapter 18, Apollos was a preacher. But he was preaching wrong. Pursuing a quarter for the Messiah, taught him better. When they heard this, this is the point. They, uh, let's follow this. Look at that verse number one. Verse number one, he says, he found when Apollos, Apollo, I, I didn't give y'all Apollos, should have gave y'all Apollos in verse number one. When it happened while Apollos was at court, that Paul had passed through the upper came to Ephesus and finding some who? He found some believers. He found some people who were trying to do right. This is why sometimes we get so entrenched and wrong, we can't turn around. We get so entrenched on what we've been doing, we can't pull out of. You, better, you ever been in an argument and you argue for a while and the person don't really show you was wrong, but because you held out? Am I the only one? <laughs> Sometimes you get so intense. And I know this don't happen to y'all. Y'all love birds. Uh, but after you get smarried, sometimes, you get so committed, TJ, you get so entrenched because you've gone so far. You don't say, I ain't never, you ain't going to, ain't been all these. Yeah, I'm in it, man. I turn back now. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He confesses that they were disciples, confesses that they believed. But the problem was, the problem remained. They didn't have, they had incomplete teaching. And because they had incomplete teaching, they were baptized wrong. So Paul said, what, well, what were you baptized? They said, into John baptism. Verse number four, John indeed baptiz baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who will come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized. Huh? In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name. The Greek on in there is ace two only. Why is that important? What it means is into the possession of. What does it mean? Because the text says, in the name of. Name describes authority. It's not what's said. It's what's being done. We're baptized into the possession of Christ. That means we belong to Christ. All things have passed away. Now all things have become we're no longer our own. You are bought 
four packs. Now, so the Lord God with your, with your body, which is his. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came to them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. We'll get this another day. I, I need to give us some more teaching on the Holy Spirit. There, there was an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and, and there was this power that comes from the laying on of hands. Ask Simon the sorcerer, because he saw that through the laying on hands from the apostles, how these things could happen. Well, that's why we don't have folks uh, uh, prophesying and laying, uh, uh, speaking in tongues today, because all the apostles are dead. All the real apostles have dead and gone. Ain't nobody around to lay hands. Well, when he was saying something, Brother Watch, yeah. Tongue is a language. That's all that word means. Tongue is a language. In Acts 2, speaking in tongues was one person speaking in a language and everybody else hearing them in their own language. That ain't what happened today. Paul would also write in the book of Corinthians, he said, if I prophesy in an unknown tongue, because that's another way, he said, unless somebody's around interpreting, I need to shut up. 1 Corinthians 12. When Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with tongues. Now the men were about 12 and all. That's not a special number. He said about 12. Not exactly 12, so we don't have to make that a perfect number. What was the point? More than a couple people had it wrong. Well, what are you trying to do? We have to stop becoming so entrenched in what we've done. If we've always... Has anybody ever said, I don't care what nobody says. Maybe you ain't said it. Have you ever heard somebody say it? I don't care what nobody's. I don't care what you. I don't care what nobody tell me. All I know is we can't be like that. And nobody can ever tell you nothing. we be if all we knew is what we came in knowing. That's why I, even as a young young child, I was crazy, Brother Bertie. I was crazy, but I ain't earned all my sense. What do you mean by that? I, I mean, some of the stuff I did listen. I didn't always do dirty, but I listened. And I thought the older folks were crazy. Uh, you know, I thought they had lost their mind. Uh, uh, older sisters like Sister Herring and stuff, she just grabbed hold of you and pinch you. And I thought, she had, you know, I thought they were crazy. But I know, I, I listened. One told me, he says, man, I don't care who's talking to you. He says, there's a drunk bum on the street is talking to you. If you're older, you listen. Because he don't been 14. But you ain't never been where he at. He says, man, you can learn something from anybody. We become so entrenched in what we've already learned, and we won't budge. But not only that, we are so ingrained to old habit. That's why I brought up like, well, just because I always eat like that. And the doctor's telling me, unless you change, you don't. But what do we do? You know better. Father says he went in the synagogue hmm, and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But some were hardened. Y'all see that? But some were hardened. But did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude. He said, them people over there, they don't know what they're talking about. 
And people that have Paul, don't listen to him. The Bible says he was departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued from two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Church, when we know better, we have to do better. There used to be nine parents when I was a kid. We got rid of Pluto. Pluto is now classified, uh, TJ, what do they call it? The dwarf planet. So all the old nursery rhymes have memorized nine planets. It's, it's out the window. There's eight now. Uh, I'd be one of them that, well, I don't care what you say. It's all the nine in me. But when we know about it, we ought to do better. We get so ingrained in stuff in the past. We say stuff like, well, this is what we always done. We say stuff hitting me, say, if we ain't broke, don't fix it. And that term can, can hurt you and help you. Because sometimes uh, when it ain't broken, we don't need to mess with it. Uh, but sometimes when it's working, we do need to improve it. Church, I need all of us to examine our lives. And that's from pulpit to the back pew. We got to get better. The beautiful thing about the word better is that it's not judgmental. Hmm? The term better just means that. It's an improvement over the past condition. So if I'm doing good, I don't mind doing better. If I'm doing bad, certainly I want to do and if I'm somewhere in between, better never hurt. Amen. As we said, Maya Angelou coined the phrase best. Yeah. Given what you know, you do the best that you can. But when you know better, you do better. If you're staying a guilty distance away from God, you know better. You do better. You don't know the pardoning of your sins. If you know better, you do better. If you know the original way that you responded, every year we rebaptize folks that's been through other churches, even here in church. Why? Because they figured out I didn't have all the information. And I realized that heaven is most important. Do we really believe that? I mean, do we really believe that? Heaven is what? Do we? What, 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 I don't want you to answer. But do we really believe there is a heaven? See, the study shows, the bottom study says that 80 uh, some percent, or the last time I checked, said 80 some percent believed there was a heaven, but only like 10 percent believed there was a hell. And if you think about those numbers, you ought to say, hmm, you ain't got to be no statistician down to get this. 80 percent said there's a heaven, but only 10 say there's a hell. The existence of heaven requires there to be. Huh? Heaven or? Because if there's no heaven, there's no heaven. Because it's the place where God is. And the place that one of those things can't be right. Most people don't believe in hell. Most folks ain't trying to go to heaven. Oh, no, they're not. Most folks, to be honest, tell you something like, I want to go to heaven. Certainly don't want to go to hell. But I'd be all right with a little middle place. And that's how we live our lives. Aiming for the middle. And church, 
There's a fallacy. If heaven's going to be our home, we've got to make some decisions. And now that we know better, we got to do better. If we're going to succeed in our lives emotionally, mentally, now we know better than that. I preach every year a couple of times on forgiveness. And the number one person that we fail to forgive is self. Hey, you didn't know no better. When that thing happened, whatever it was that happened, you didn't know no better. If you had known, you probably wouldn't have done it. I don't do nothing else. Let them hog malls and chillings. <laughs> we can't live for Christ. Paul said, for me to die is gain. But for me to live is Christ. God wants you to live for him. We can't do no work for the church if we got pacemakers, amen? And I'm not picking at nobody, but it's difficult to work when we're not healthy. The two things that bother me for Christians is we serve an almighty, awesome God, but oftentimes we're in the worst health and poor, poorest financially. And if you probably watch and say, wait, why are you picking at me? You could no, I'm not shooting at you, but it's just a bad, it, my father owns a cattle over a thousand hills. He owns a hill. Riches and great. He lives in a place where the sheep streets are paved with gold. But I'm broke. Because I haven't learned to live the way he would have me to live. And when you know better, you ought to do better. I don't know where you are, but I invite you to come. I invite you to respond as together we stand, and as together we sing. Not to temptation, for a yielding is sin. Please, we help you some other to Mindfully, humble, our fashions of you. to Jesus, he will carry you through, why don't you have the Savior to help you, one person thing that he you, Jesus is willing to aid you, you may be seated, he will carry you through. Amen and amen. We have four that remain standing. Uh, we'll start on uh, my left with Sister Milton. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray. God, merciful Father, Lord of Lord, King of King, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for life, health, and for strength. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who came, bled, suffered, and died on our behalf. We thank you for this right, this purpose, uh, this ability we have to uh, pray you, and it's to talk to you, to 
uh, share with you the things that are going on in our mind to uh, allow us to release some burdens and give them to you. Thank you, for God, for always listening, always answering our prayers. Father, we ask uh, prayers of healing for uh, two of your daughters, Sister Norman and Sister Golden. Uh, Father, they have different struggles, but they struggle nonetheless. And Father, we ask that you be with them, bless them, strengthen them, encourage them, uh, lift them up where they're torn down. Father, we thank you for Yana. Uh, just ask a blessing upon her, and, uh, her health conditions and the things that she's struggling with at this time. Father, we ask that you uh, bless, uh, watch over, care for her, uh, take her through this uh, storm be with the doctors and the medical teams as they attempt to go through these tests and different things to uh, discover what's going on. Be with us as a family. Help us to be uh, bound together by your love. Help us to uh, support one another. Father, we thank you for Joshua and his return to worship this morning. We thank you for strengthening him. We thank you for all those who reached out, showed care. We thank you for uh, even those who directly intervened to help the situation. Father, we just ask that you continue to watch over him, strengthen him, help him to increase in strength. Father, help us all to be who you would have us to be. Help us to all be uh, good children. Uh, help us to all do better uh, day by day. Father, we love you, and we appreciate you, and we offer this prayer in our own name, um, but in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. We're so thankful for uh, each and every one of you who are with us on uh, this morning. We thank you for uh, your attendance as well as your attention. As was mentioned, uh, we do have a, a brief presentation we would like to make. Um, we have one additional uh, graduate uh, in our midst uh, last uh, week or the week before last we honored uh, one of our most recent uh, college graduates uh, Christiana who graduated from the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University in the field of pharmacy and so uh, we celebrated her and on this week we want to recognize uh, Grace, uh, Grace Sherman. I told you I was going to embarrass you, so come on, come on up this way. Uh, Grace graduated uh, Apopka High School, uh, one of the very best uh, high schools uh, in uh, the state of Florida, in my humble opinion. Only second to uh, Evans High School, where I'm my And so, Grace. Uh, uh, we got you something that's a token of appreciation from the church. Let you know uh, that we love you. Once a day we get you some uh, some supplies. Uh, we had school and uh, uh, don't worry about getting me nothing. <laughs> um, I'll be I'll be all right. Uh, Grace, want, Grace is going. Uh, are you going to college somewhere? Family. All right, all right, all right, all right. Grace is going to. Uh, FAMU in the fall, and so we're excited. And she's also out here. It's gonna wrestle. And as you guys know, I've been I've been tutoring them and wrestling, <laughs> teaching them secret moves and whatnot. And so um, we, you'll be far. I won't be able to come. So we have to transition to another wrestling mentor. Um, but we'll be praying for you, and we're just excited for you. God bless you. Give us. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we'll be standing at this time, the person that's chosen for our closing prayer. We ask that you make your way forward. Lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And in the light from heaven, you're my soul. They made my heart in love, and wrote my name in the I'll just lose all with Jesus. Oh, 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 o